The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning or good afternoon. This is a webinar hosted by One Insure. Thank you to our friends at One Insure. Featuring um, myself from SMA, the folks from One Insure, and people from Microsoft. We'll talk about it in a little bit. We are going to talk about analytics beyond reporting, dashboards, and scorecards. Very exciting topic. Subtitled, Voice of the Experts. So we hope we can give you some insights that will help you in your daily busy going forward. Let me introduce your speakers for today. Um, disrespectfully so, I'll start with myself. I'm a partner at SMA. I help with developing companies with, with companies with developing roadmaps and expanding their business opportunities. I work primarily with insurers as well as with solution providers. And within the SMA space, I oversee the data, data and analytics practice. So I'm very pleased to be with you here today. And I hope that we will have great conversations about data and analytics, specifically about the roadmap. My first fellow speaker is Ben, our good friend Ben Moreland. Ben is the VP of Data and Analytics for One Insurer, our host of the day. He has over 15 years of experience in the insurance industry, and he is still smiling. And he has 30 years of experience in INT, in IT. Prior to joining this company, he worked for Salent as a, a fellow um, analyst for me, and he focused on data mastery, uh, BPM, portals, rules, SOA, and policy admin solutions. He wrote reports on data mastery and insurance, and he authored two big data reports. Before he worked at Salent, he was active in the industry as a director of enterprise architecture um, at the Hartford. And his primary responsibility right now is to help drive business value into the insurer suite solution and assist customers to better understand the business value of insurer analytics. Ben has great insights to share with you, with all of us, and I look forward to hearing his part of this webinar. Then our final speaker is Tony Jacob. Tony is Managing Director, Worldwide Insurance Industry Team at Microsoft. Um, key priorities for this team are enabling carriers to become digital insurers across their distribution channels, customer, and products, to improve business intelligence and analytics capabilities, including very exciting stuff such as big data, cloud technologies for core systems modernization, and hopefully improving cost ratios and improving business agility with that. He has some great insights later on in the presentation about exciting new stuff that is going on that can help us all in the insurance industry become much more agile and much more engaged at a deep level in analytics. So we're truly looking forward to hearing Tony speak, who has, before he joined Microsoft, vast experiences with other you know, consulting and IT organizations globally in the insurance space. So thank you to both of my fellow speakers for being with us today. And first we will go over market studies, market findings, and industry um, opinions on what we have seen recently around the topic of the day, which is how are we going to move from reporting, KPIs, and operational analytics into more insights into what we you know, can do to improve our business results by profitable growth and reduced expenses. And the first slide I want to share with you is fairly recent SMA research. We have been tracking now for seven years how carriers describe their own mode, their own position, where they are, on a couple of angles that lead to transforming, growing, sustaining, or surviving their business. And we have good news to share here this year. This is, there is a massive step forward between 2015 and 2016 on carriers that are citing that they are transforming, truly transforming their business and their business model. There is also still a significant part, about one third of all the carrier respondents, that are saying they are growing their business. And the collective statistics around sustaining and surviving are not that large anymore. It's only about 20% of the companies, after all the financial crisis and all the difficult times we went through over the last years, that are in sustaining or surviving mode. 
the vast majority of our carriers, 80%, is either growing or truly transforming. So this is good news. So what are they doing to transform? We tend to refer to that big question under an umbrella called the new gen, new generation insurer. It touches on four big categories of activities, customer, business models, products and services, and then underpinned by technology and data. Each one of these categories, again, breaks out in some specific initiatives or specific areas of attention. Um, customer engagement, new customer segments, channels, products and services, Internet of Things, enterprise data and analytics. I want to point that one out under the data and um, technology part at the bottom because that's what we will talk about today. And outside industry participation, geographical expansion, and the digital insurer. Plenty, plenty, plenty of opportunities and initiatives that insurers can focus on in order to transform. So what are they doing to actually do transform and where do they focus their attention? And mainly equally important, their funding and investments on. We asked 116 insurers to answer that question around December, January, and actually we just did the research. We just published the research on this a um, couple of weeks ago at the latest. The big, very big area where insurers are investing in right now is data and analytics, so-called enterprise data and analytics. They truly try to elevate their game around data and analytics to an enterprise level. 46% of all the carriers that we spoke to is getting new funding for it or creating new funding resources, sources for it. 23% of the carriers are reallocating funding towards this initiative and, and adding on new funding. And 31% of the folks are reallocating funding into these initiatives. But this is an area of big investment, big attention, um, lots of initiatives and plenty of activity going on. A couple of other really big ones that are not in scope of what we're going to talk about today, but I, that I do want to point out is that there is a significant amount of new investment coming in anything around customer engagement, customer experience, customer here loosely defined as being um, policyholder as well as distribution channel. There is still a lot of uh, work and investment going on in core systems replacement. These tends to be massively big investments, long-term projects, as you all know. And we see a little pop-up on the bottom, if you go to the bottom of the slide, and really start seeing some traction around Internet of Things, wearables, driverless vehicles, some of the new technology. On a bigger scale, there is not a lot of actual money yet going into those really new emerging tech and trends, but there is a big in increase in what people are doing there. So to summarize what we just saw, 86% of the PNC carriers that we spoke to have strategic initiatives and new investments around data and analytics, and 77% of the life and annuity carriers have similar initiatives going on in their space. So I think it's fair to conclude that data and analytics is a very critical initiative area for our carrier space in the United States right now. So what are carriers doing in the data and analytics space? We tend to slot progress along an analytics spectrum. And I like this slide because it simplifies very complicated things very well, I think. And if we talk about business intelligence, the first thing that carriers look at, any company will look at, is how do we gain new insights from historical data? And they do that with reporting. We all start with reporting. What happened? You know, show me what happened the last month, the last quarter, the last year. The next step is dashboards and scorecards. What is happening? Give me more timely data. I do not only want to know historically what happened. I also want to see what's happening right now or at least very recently. And then we add, we, we add on ad hoc queries. Let's start dig into some of the data that we see on our dashboards and reports and figure out where the problem might be. 
that's the first step along the spectrum of analytics. The next step is, what are our new opportunities? And then we get into the also important why questions. Why is this happening? Run what if scenarios. Analyze, you know, what is causing some of the things that we have seen happening. And then we get to advanced statistical analysis and start trying to figure out what are the consequences if this continues. You know, let's try to extrapolate what we have seen in the past and what is happening right now into the future. When at that point in time we tend to stop and then we move forward and that's a big change into advanced analytics. And advanced analytics are sort of listed under an umbrella of how do we capitalize on new opportunities? What is likely to happen? And the techniques that we use for that are data and text mining. We start truly deploying predictive analytics, ways, tools, and models, and we go into predictive modeling. Um, sexy stuff, normally. And ultimately, the holy grail is to evolve into emerging analytics. How do we leverage all human intelligence on top of all the analytics tools and modes and deployments that we just discussed. And questions that are being answered there, what can we do about it? What can we do about what is happening and what is likely to happen? And we do that with analytic collaboration and we do that with cognitive computing, machine learning, augmented with human sensing and human insights. All of this is underpinned to a higher degree to the right of this slide and to the left by internal and external data, the more you move to the right, the more you get into big data and unstructured kind of data spaces. So this is the spectrum we try to slot insurers against, see where they are and see where the logical next way to go is. Now, we're not there yet. This is a beautiful slide that I just showed everybody, I think. But not many company, if any, has gone through the whole spectrum yet. So let's talk a little bit about where the industry is. Let's talk about the adoption of traditional business intelligence solutions first. And we looked at PNC insurers for this specific slide. Although reporting is a well-established function and capability, there is a lack of solid reporting capabilities, advanced usage as the enterprise-wide level. As you can see, not more than 14% at the most of companies responded that they have reporting dashboards, ad hoc query capabilities, analysis and scenario planning capabilities at their enterprise-wide level. However, the vast majority of the respondents or the majority of the respondents had capabilities around specifically reporting ad hoc queries and analysis in some key areas, um, areas that are very data-driven normally, product, actuarial, some claims, those kind of areas. So there is plenty of room for improvement here, especially at an enterprise level. When we look at advanced and emerging analytic solutions, Advanced statistical analysis, data text mining, predictive analysis, and predictive models, again, not more than 12% maximum has these capabilities at an enterprise level. However, more than half, a little bit more than half, in some cases slightly more than a little bit, has capabilities around statistical analysis, predictive anal analytics, and predictive models in some key areas. Quite often, again, actuary product, uh, some claims, some distribution management, but mainly on the heavy data intense functions in the organization. And when we go to emerging analytics, you know, that is relatively far out for most carriers that we work with and that we talk to in our market. 5% um, say, optimistic people, say that they have advanced usage at an enterprise-wise level in analytics collaboration and cognitive computing, um, and about a third says they have it in some key areas to have that capability for at least analytics collaboration. So the conclusion on the detailed breakdown of what carriers are doing in this space is that most carriers have some functionality of at least the first 60, 70, 80 percent of the BI spectrum in key functional areas in their organization. 
there's not too much traction yet at the enterprise level, nor is there a lot of traction yet in emerging analytics. Let's talk about the attributes and adoption of business analytics projects. After we looked at what business areas are being um, heavily engaged in analytic exercises and progress, we did a look um, over the last five years and slotted at projects that carriers were actively engaging in at the maturity of those. The orange ones are the ones that in between 2012 and 2016, we saw massive improvement and most carriers have very solid capabilities around those specific functionalities. Financial and regulatory reporting, the left upper corner, risk portfolio exposure, um, upper row in the middle, documentation. And what, what is interesting to note on this one is that the assumption that you need to have near-perfect data to do a good job on analytics and to get values out of it seems to be wrong when we look at this chart. Carriers are focusing on many different projects and have completed many different projects from good enough data, brand perception, to near-perfect data or perfect data, financial regulatory reporting. The speed in decision-making seems to be much more relevant for the success or at least the um, appetite for analytics projects. If you go from periodic um, decision-making time speed needed, financial and regulatory reporting does not need to happen on the spot every five minutes, quite often once a month or less than that. And the same with customer needs, market segmentation, cat modeling, reserves. All of those are projects that require recurring insights, but not real time or near time. The further up we go to the right on this slide, the more difficult it becomes to get insights without close to real time data and the less we, success we have seen and the less you know, appetite we have seen to engage in these projects. Um, key technologies and tools for projects and personal lines. We asked people to, in, in, in about a month ago, what they are using, what technologies and what tools they are using to embark on all those initiatives that we just looked at. And we saw that most of them have technologies and tools in place and are either looking at replacing or adding to them or enhancing them. The vast majority of the carriers that responded in personal lines does not want to replace or add brand new tools, or brand new technologies, but invest, plans to invest in 2016 in enhancing upon the base that they already have. And most prevalently, they want to do that to a degree of about 50% of the people that responded around business intelligence, so that's good news for everybody on the line, master data management or data warehousing, what I tend to refer to as the plumbing of data, IT security and cyber threat, that one is coming up very quickly, uh, not surprisingly so. And then mobility applications and to a degree predictive analytics. Anything below that, less critical, less, you know, appetite to do big investment in, less, you know, high ranking um, for 2016 on the investment um, um, planning. So we'll go to the next slide. For commercial lines, it's not extremely different. We see a higher number, higher percentage of commercial lines carriers want to replace or add on on what they do. So there's more room for new investments in the commercial space. Um, there is also a big appetite for enhancing on existing capabilities. The order is slightly different but the top three uh, areas of attention are the same for commercial lines and PNC as they are for personal lines, business intelligence, master data management, data warehousing, and IT security and cyber threat, followed by, predict by predictive analytics. What we do see in commercial, the big difference in the top five um, areas of attention is that mobility application ranks lower for commercial lines as it does for personal lines, which I guess is a very sensible observation. The other thing that we wanted to look at is 
what is going to drive future investments in analytics? We have emerging technologies popping up, and there is a lot of talk about this, and anybody that read news this week has also seen that Google Compare has decided to um, stop being active in our space. Um, but what is going to make a difference, and what do we need to take into consideration in planning our path along the analytics spectrum? And what we do at SMA is we track about 10 emerging technologies, and we take the relatively arbitrary position that there is a tipping point if 30% of the industry says they are going to seriously invest in this to pilot some of those initiatives or to incorporate them, these technologies, into their actual business as usual. So we use 30% as a tipping point. And as you can see, this is data from 2015, as you can see, the first area that emerging technology that will become important or will become at least a player in analytics in the insurance space is new payment, payment technologies. Uh, the second one is Internet of Things. We hear a lot of carriers that are dabbling into utilization sensor data, utilization uh, home security smart devices, utilization obviously of the Fitbit as we all have read on the life insurance side. The third one will be um, drones and aerial um, imagery and the fourth one will be wearable devices. I just refer to the Fitbit amongst others. And then the, the last one out there that is worthwhile mentioning is gamification. We expect that to become big somewhere around 2019, 18, 19. Anything else is further out. And as much as we like to talk about all those outlayers, I would not worry too much about having big analytical plans around them right now because the, the industry is just not ready to do so. I will end with a quote from Bill Gates. He's a good person to quote. He's obviously hugely successful and does wonderful things now that he has made a lot of money for the world. And he said, we always overestimate the change that will occur in the next two years. We get nervous. We think that the world will change in the next two years and we frantically run around to get ready for it. And we underestimate the change that will occur in the next 10 years. Change happens relatively quickly, even in our space. So don't let yourself be lulled into inaction, which is good advice from Bill Gates. And now I hand it over to my um, dear friend Ben, who has the big tasks now to come up with um, insightful words that will uh, minimally equal the lessons we learned from Bill Gates. Ben, it's up to you. Thanks, Monique. Uh, appreciate uh, that and I appreciate the, the excellent picture that you uh, painted uh, for everybody in terms of uh, where we are in the insurance space uh, with respect to um, BI and analytics. So first, a little bit about OneInsure um, before we start. Uh, we are a Carlyle Group company. We have $180 million, uh, in, um, uh, in, written, in in assets. OneInsure is a provider of technology and services for uh, more than 25 years, to get dedicated specifically to the insurance sector, uh, in particular PNC. We have 400 professionals globally working uh, from six different uh, countries, uh, software in eight languages used by over 30,000 people worldwide. The One Insurer Suite, uh, which comprises policy, claims, and insure, One Insurer Analytics, is operating in eight of the 10 global insurance markets across the four continents. Across four continents. And we have claims and analytics uh, as a single inst installation across 12 countries. Um, our solution is modular. In fact, the polling, policy, billing, and claims is, exact, is, is one solution. It's just configured for policy and billing uh, or claims or um, all of the above. Uh, and analytics is designed and architected as a separate uh, solution. Uh, most of the data that we take into our uh, analytics solution today does not come from one insurer systems, but from legacy other uh, vendor solutions. Um, and then, but of course, if uh, you select our uh, suite, there is the uh, out-of-the-box ETL that's provided, the integration. We've won 20 awards in six different categories since 2010. We are a global firm, and our U.S. headquarters are in uh, Farmington, uh, uh, Connecticut. So I really like this slide that SMA has, has come up uh, with uh, to define analytics. One of the problems uh, uh, both that uh, vendors struggle with, as well as uh, create, to be honest, is what analytics means. And we've been into uh, carriers, and they say the word analytics, and they mean Excel reports. 
and we've been into other carriers, and they say analytics, and they mean uh, predictive models and data and text mining and Hadoop, um, about big data uh, type of processing. So everyone says the word, but this helps make, as uh, Monique said, it, it very slim, simply lays it out uh, into uh, the, the spectrum uh, that uh, carriers should be looking at. And one of the things that we see a lot of carriers struggle with is they have history um, and, and experience uh, leveraging some of these solutions in one department. Um, however, at the enterprise level, you really need to take a look at your data and analytics roadmap. It, it, it's critical. That way you're not going to make um, tactical decisions you have to throw out as you move across this spectrum at the enterprise uh, layer. Uh, another saying, what worked at the data silos layer will not necessarily work at the enterprise uh, layer as well. And the other thing that the carriers uh, need to consider who are just starting to look into this, there is no one solution that will address all your analytic needs. Uh, what we recommend is you look at what is the biggest business problem that you're looking to address. And then how do you build up uh, a roadmap that will enable you to go uh, from maybe simple reporting at the enterprise level with data you can trust and grow that to answer the why questions around analyses, uh, what if it continues, and then start to address um, how you're going to handle solutions that can address the more advanced and emerging technologies. So as always, uh, as you see in every other space, um, think strategically but act tactically. So some of the things that, that we're seeing uh, in, in the insurance when we go to prospective customers. Uh, at the enterprise level, you have different departments that have different conflicting reports and possibly different data sources. Just about everyone has experienced uh, in senior level management or any man meeting that you have people citing that their reports come from the data, same data source, but the values are different, the reports are different. And part of that is governance and semantics. You may have one that has earned premium without fees. You might have another that's referencing earned premium um, with fees. Another one in which uh, they're looking at uh, the, the quote conversion rate and how they count quotes in a time period may differ from department to department. So you really don't have apples to apples. You have apples and oranges that you struggle with. Uh, in addition, uh, they have out-of-date reports and analyses. Most carriers tell us it takes anywhere from four to eight weeks, and to some even longer than that, to get an updated report or a modified report to enable them to have uh, that ad hoc query that Monique was talking about, to be able to have greater insight into a potential problem. Another struggle is the ability to grow and adjust. They have a project. They define their data model. It works for that first project, but then they start to uh, move on to the second, third, fourth project, and it doesn't extend to those projects. And basically, they either have to scrap what they did the first time or start to put band-aids or duct tape, whatever term you want to use, around the solution, and it doesn't work very well. The other problem that a lot of carriers have is when they do select a vendor solution, it's limited and proprietary. They sometimes have to go to the vendor for every new report, every modification. If they want a new data source to be brought in, they have to go to the vendor. Uh, and then that really slows them down and, and, and doesn't enable them to, to move quickly. And finally, the ability to scale to the enterprise level. Usually you'll start off in one area, but as you grow uh, either through acquisitions or other departments, that data starts to grow, and now are you able to scale to that? So one of the things uh, with uh, one insurer analytics is we feel it addresses all of these challenges. So first, our solution will enable you to run all of your analytics off of the same data. Our system allows you to restrict, uh, I put filters on so that maybe certain departments can only see their data, certain businesses can only see their data, agents can only see their policies. But it's all the same analyses, it's just the data that goes into those analyses is filtered. We have an automated nightly run. It can be configured to run as often as you like, but most of our clients run it on a nightly basis. So your data is always less than uh, uh, 24 hours or less uh, in terms of the reports and analyses you're looking at. Uh, you don't have to worry about rerunning everything. The data is automatically populated. The analyses are automatically updated. All of our clients over the last 10 plus years with our analytics solution has extended our data model anywhere from 10 to 100%. 
So not only is our data model been proven to be robust in terms of production, it's also been proven to be extendable. We are a Microsoft Gold BI partner. Uh, we are based on the Microsoft SQL Server BI stack. There is nothing that is hidden except for one small API, API that dynamic, dynamically creates uh, the queries necessary uh, for the uh, modifications to analyses. Other than that, it's all SQL Server components so that we give you the data model, we give you the out-of-the-box content. If you buy our solution, you can run with that, uh, work with us as, as much as you like. And if we separate paths, you can continue to grow because, again, it's all based on the Microsoft, uh, uh, very strong and robust Microsoft SQL Server solution. Uh, we, uh, we, we've been recently selected by a very large tier, uh, tier one carrier. Um, and uh, one of the things they wanted to do was make sure we could handle the loads uh, that, uh, 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 that uh, they threw at us. So we asked uh, American Family what would make them comfortable. And they said 13 million uh, claims. Uh, with about 17 million exposures and 41 million payments. And by the way, we want to see how you perform with 100 concurrent users and zero think time. So we took the hardest analysis query that we have, which is a lost triangle uh, analysis. We just basically installed a system on the Microsoft Labs uh, in Chicago, and we imported the data, and we just ran it. And we had under 10-second response time uh, for that 100 simultaneous queries um, and the worst outlier was under 16 seconds. So clearly, uh, we, we have a lot of uh, capabilities in terms of performance, and that was without tuning, that's without um, any uh, partitioning or any in-memory computing. So we have a long runway uh, to be able to handle even increased loads. And we've been in um, production for, for 10 years. So what differentiates our solution uh, from, from a lot of the others? Uh, first is we come with over 660 out-of-the-box, predefined analyses, claims, policy, organizational performance, such as written premium and loss ratio, those monthly type of calculations carriers do, and data management. We started out designing the system for business users, so there's minimal to no IT dependencies. Business users, through mouse clicks, are able to create new analyses, modify existing analyses. Um, you do need IT if you want to bring in new data sources, but other than that, the business users are, are, are free to just move forward as quickly as they need. Automated governance, data you can trust. We work with the carrier so that you define what the earned premium means. You tell us what the quote, the, the formula for the quote uh, uh, conversion rate is. You tell us when to define an open and closed claim. All of that gets mapped in. After that, everything is automated from the extracts to the, to the users using the system so that you know there's been no modifications, no human touch. Drill anywhere. Any vendor today can give you drill down, drill up. That's table stakes. What we allow a business user to do is, let's say while they're looking at a lost triangle and they see a couple of uh, cells that are anomalies, they can click on those cells and drill across to a brand new analysis. Maybe it's a multidimensional. Maybe it's a geographic. Maybe it's a point in time. We don't limit the business users uh, to be able to, to find the root cause, answer that why question. We provide lost triangles, activity analysis, location analysis, point in time analyses, and train of thought. This is where you allow a business user to, to follow their, their train of thought, what, what, what their thought process. So they may see some poor performing areas or a poor performing team or even individuals. Maybe it's their workload. Let's throw on the count of claims. All right, we see kind of claims. That wasn't it. Well, maybe it's region. Oh, I can find out that the Northeast is not performing well, but all the others are performing fine. I can now zero in on the Northeast. I can now zero in on the teams in the Northeast. I can look at other dimensions and, and measures, all done through mouse clicks by the business user. So I wanted to end uh, with, with a quote from one of our current um, um, uh, customers, uh, Paul Choi from American Family that uh, they were looking for an insurer analytics solution that would help them uh, grow their insurance data and make it immediately um, uh, relevant. Uh, they're looking to forward to using our analytics to, to be able to find out those why questions. And with that, I will turn it over to Tony. Ben, I appreciate it. Uh, well, let me move fast through my section because we want to allow time for a Q&A. But uh, you know, what I wanted to talk about is where do we go forward? How do we and uh, our work with OneInsure, um, 
really support that uh, move through the analytics spectrum uh, that Monique walked us through. And we, we really appreciate the work we've done with one insurer over the years. Uh, we worked with the team to move the policy admin and claims system over to SQL Server. So we're using SQL Server as the, the database on those products, but also uh, have worked hard with one insurer to help that team take advantage of the uh, SQL uh, BI stack from Microsoft for the one, in, one insurer analytics solution that Ben's walked us through. And we've had many discussions with PNC carriers on how that solution can help in areas such as claims, like what Ben mentioned with American Family and what he mentioned where um, many times that uh, one insurer analytics solution uh, being dropped on, if you will, legacy claim systems and replicating the data from that legacy claims application up into one insurer analytics. And then thanks to the BI stack and all the work that uh, one insurer has done on the OLAP cubes and the pre-built reports and the claims loss triangles, uh, more easily expose that data and really deliver value to the business much more quickly. But that's reporting, right? Uh, that's at the left-hand side of the spectrum that Monique walked us through. How do we move to the right together? And that's what I want to chat about. When we look about how do we go forward and, and what can we bring to the table Microsoft that could help on that journey across the analytics spectrum, I want to talk about two things. One is the presentation layer on the left. And uh, two is the database, of course, on the right. With the presentation layer, what we're trying to do is provide a, a better visualization technology to the end users to really create a self-help BI capability where IT controls the data but federates out, uh, federates out access to the data to the end users. And these could be general business users. not uh, They don't have to be actuaries or data scientists or business analysts, but really get it out to the your average business user, but give them a self-help BI tool where they can build the dashboards and the reports that they want um, in a really powerful presentation layer. And you could see this presentation layer today if you just go to uh, uh, powerbi.microsoft.com and if you have a data set like in an Excel spreadsheet, upload it into Power BI and then see the presentation layer capabilities, the visualization capabilities you have for that product. Basically, we're trying to deliver a better self-help BI, get rid of those ad hoc requests, and put the power in the hands of the end users, have a better presentation layer for visualization, and really give a tool that allows you to mash up internal and external data sets and get to those new insights that Monique mentioned. Basically, in a nutshell, more power in the hands of the end user. Um, on the database side, we're making a lot of investments in our SQL Server product. Um, we want to uh, you know, improve our traditional BI capabilities that we support, but also start to enhance the ability to uh, uh, more quickly handle larger data sets and, and real-time data to get into areas like cat modeling. Um, and we want to also incorporate uh, advanced analytics and modeling capabilities in with our database product to uh, really, again, help move the needle into the more forward-looking end of the analytics spectrum and into uh, what we would call predictive and prescriptive analytics. So, you know, if we think about the, the state of technology today in analytics, it's typically, uh, you know, a, a very uh, well-formed uh, situation, if you will. It's right. It's a, usually some sort of enterprise data warehouse. They're well-formed sch schemas. Uh, the questions are already modeled and designed. Uh, it's really sort of a, a tops-down approach, and it's on the left hand of that spectrum where you're looking in the rear view mirror and looking at what happened and hopefully you know, some insight into why it happened. What we'd love to do is move into uh, the more advanced analytics, and that's where we start to wrap more capabilities, big data capabilities, both on-premise and in the cloud, to support the, the real-time data, uh, the predictive modeling, support those Internet of Things scenarios that we're starting to see emerge, like wearable devices in life and group, or obviously usage-based insurance and in auto or smart home. So how can we bring a full, fully formed data platform, both on-premise and cloud, into play to, uh, again, allow us to move forward and, and to the right of that spectrum? Um, one thing we're doing around uh, the Power BI uh, product, as I mentioned, is um, really bringing that cloud-based analytics service to uh, the average user 
where they can create the live dashboards and the rich interactive uh, reports that they want. Uh, what's interesting about this is um, the those reports, those Power BI reports, can both connect to the structured schemas, like the OLAP cubes, the reporting cubes that are in the one insurer analytics solution, as well as unstructured data sets, uh, tabular data sets, multi-dimensional models, and all without caching the data in the presentation layer. Uh, so you can keep the data in sync. IT can control the data, but you put the powers in the uh, power in the hands of the end users to visualize. Um, that is, a, I think, an important function to get uh, more power to the end users and make better business decisions off of the data that the insurance carriers have. Now, when we get into the, the database, we're also making a lot of investments. We're making a lot of investments in in-memory technologies within SQL Server. So that way we can um, handle uh, uh, not only the larger data sets, but we can do things like have a hot data residing in memory and cold data residing on the disk. We can improve the performance. We can get into the, the real-time and OLTP data uh, for things like the CAT situations. So really adding a lot um, into SQL Server. Um, also, we're improving the capability of those uh, OLAP cubes, those reporting cubes, and SQL Server analysis services to handle larger data models and, and handle both multi-dimensional and tabular models to really make it capable of supporting all the big data scenarios or big data needs that we're seeing in the market. Um, we are have also invested and uh, built Polybase into SQL Server. Um, so what we want to do there is expand the power to extract value from both the structured data and unstructured data using uh, the in-house T-SQL skills that you would have. Uh, what we found is that um, uh, Hadoop skill sets are a little bit in short supply, right? The, the data scientists with Hadoop tool sets are hard to, uh, hard to find, hard to hire, but what we can do is if we can hit those, um, those data sets we want to hit and manage the Hadoop data all with, uh, hit them with T-SQL queries and all manage them within the same tool set, maybe we can address some of those skill set needs and make the existing folks more productive and make uh, the ability to run against that data easier for even uh, folks who don't maybe have all those uh, Hadoop tool, uh, Hadoop skill sets we would love them to have. And then I think this is probably the most exciting part for me. Uh, this is actually part of the world I came out of before joining Microsoft. And I think it speaks to something that Monique said about some of the sexier areas of uh, advanced analytics. And that's around R modeling. So in April of last year, we acquired, Microsoft acquired Revolution Analytics, which has a product called Revolution R. And it, what it does is it extends the open source R statistical analysis language, the R modeling language that the data scientists, the quants, the actuaries learn in college, coming out of college, and then sometimes they have to then, when they get hired, move into proprietary tools. We want to enable them to continue to write their models in R. But what Revolution R is is basically a managed service layer and a capability of better managing that compute environment and the data environment and the, uh, the tool sets for the data science productivity for both developing those R models, running those R models, and being more productive to do basically more what-if analyses. Um, so this is adding an additional workload to SQL. You know, today in SQL we have online transaction processing, we have data warehousing, we have BI. Now we bring R modeling into the database itself. And so in other words, we are bringing R code, if you will, right to the source of the data and able to run that within that database product. Um, this is uh, leading to a lot of conversations with insurance carriers around things that they want to do that I think other industries do so well, like uh, uh, doing interesting modeling around uh, propensity to buy or next best offer guidance based on insights from social and interaction with direct channels that you can gain on the policyholder or the prospective policyholder and then drive that prompt to the producer to follow up. Uh, how can we capture more insights from digital interactions and turn them into uh, basically a lead for the producer to follow up with some next best offer guidance behind it. Certainly we see this being used in claims fraud analytics, uh, some of the cat modeling scenarios. Uh, it's a really interesting area, I think just in its infancy, 
but how do we make those data scientists more productive in that modeling language that they know and they've learned from university, but make it really enterprise grade and enterprise class. So these are just a few of the investments we've made in the presentation layer in the database that we have the groundwork, if you will, we have the foundation to be able to take advantage of uh, the combined one insurer Microsoft team. And now we're looking at ways to bring these technologies to bear to again help insurance carriers and other firms move along that spectrum that uh, Monique articulated at the start of the, uh, the webinar. So what I'd love to do now is uh, turn it back over to Monique and we're going to open up the Q&A portion of the webinar. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Ben. Um, we had a couple of questions come in, and um, I'll try to put them in a fairly logical order. As we mentioned earlier, if we cannot get to answering all the questions in this call, we have another six, seven minutes, so I'm, I don't think we will be able to answer all the questions. We will do it by email after the call, probably by early next week or by next week. So the first one, Ben, I'll throw this one to you. Um, somebody says, we're still struggling to get quality reports out there. Why would we care about all those, you know, new, and to use that word again, more sexy applications? That's a great question, Monique, and thank you. Uh, I think the, the thing that carriers are, are struggling with is that they don't know where to start. And so they, they since they don't know, uh, they they think that they have to uh, go back to what uh, I saw in the mid 2000s is the uh, uh, boil the ocean uh, approaches of master data management. Everyone thought they had to have uh, uh, the the perfect or near perfect data into uh, this one central uh, data warehouse before they could even begin. Um, the reason the carriers need to, to to worry about this is there are some that have already started and 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 the as everyone knows the investment returns for, for insurers is not what it used to be. So that means you've really got to cut your expenses, look for opportunities, and be able to move fast. And if you don't have uh, this foundation, this analytics spectrum starting to be addressed, you're going to find yourself behind very fast. And it's not necessarily something you can jump on quickly. So you need to start addressing it now. Um, it's not light years away. I was just recently at a conference uh, that involved a, a number of uh, carriers on the front end, um, and uh, they are already looking um, beyond uh, the, the analytics and reporting and, and integrating the um, advanced analytics and, and even some of the emerging technologies into uh, their solutions and, and being driven by business. So I think the answer is it, you're going to get passed by if you do not uh, start that uh, journey um, uh, uh, sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So partially capabilities, partially competitive pressure, um, external influences, those kind of things. Right? Correct. Mm -hmm. I okay. think we do also have to look at the fintech okay. startups that are starting to pop up, whether it's a, a sure start or Evo Sure or Policy Genius or Friendsurance or you name it. I think all those fintech startups that and we actually work with many of them. I think what they're doing is they're leveraging algorithms, they're leveraging advanced analytics, and finding new ways to drive insights from that that data. And I think they're going to uh, you know disrupt some of our traditional businesses. Our advice to carriers would be take a page from their playbook and embrace that. Mm -hmm. That's a very good observation, Tony. Thank you. So I'll throw this next one to you also. Tony, um, somebody asked a question and said, you know, with all this movement or investment towards more enterprise-wise applications of specific analytic tools and capabilities, do you, is it necessary, is it required, is it absolutely necessary to have an enterprise data warehouse? Um, you know, I think the answer is yes and no, right? It's always a what was the old Harry Truman line? He always was looking for a one-handed economist. Um, uh, the reason I say that is because I think with, with Ben's example, absolutely, right, the, the, the brilliance of one insurer analytics is really getting down to a lockdown and control of that data, a data model that's extensible, reporting cubes, pre-built reports, you know, that structured formal approach where you really know the quality of the data, you trust the data, and now you're, you're, you're leveraging all that. Um, at the same time, when we look at these big data scenarios, whether they're the, the Internet of Things type scenarios or, 
or uh, or you know some of the others like bringing in social data you you've got to have the ability to uh, uh, to unstructured data as well, and this is where we're doing a lot of investment around technologies that will enable data lakes, for example, where all the data is in one location, and then you can apply uh, Hadoop or machine learning type analyses against those big sources of unstructured data and glean new insights or bring that and mash it together with some of the structured data. So I think you need to have both. But certainly when we talk to carriers about traditional reporting and analytics, it often leads to the the enterprise data warehouse and the master data management discussions of let's just get to version of the truth we trust and then we'll expand outward. Mm -hmm. And if I can uh, can add to that, one of the the benefits of, of our solution is um, you can have different types of of data warehouses. Uh, when people think of an enterprise data warehouse, it's more of a transactional. Um, and one of the things our solution allows you to do is if you have an enterprise data warehouse or you're building one out. Uh, we can take the data from from that data warehouse, but we also have an analytics data warehouse, and, and, and the difference is is that most uh, carriers that have tried to build an analytics solution off of a transactional enterprise data warehouse, it doesn't scale very well. You don't get the efficiencies. Whereas uh, with our model, it's designed for analytics. It's designed for efficient and fast uh, user uh, uh, interface. So even that question about the enterprise uh, data warehouse, um, you don't need to get all your data into one place and get it scrubbed, uh, there are solutions like ours which are hybrid which will allow you to, to start moving forward with the data directly from the source system um, and then if you don't want later, build out those lakes, build out those uh, an enterprise data warehouse. You can delay that decision. So again, you're right on Tony, it, can, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Wonderful. Then I'll wrap it up. I'll summarize what you just said because it's sort of, it was another question. It says, do we need to have all the data resources, all the data skills, and all the data marts, et cetera, to be centralized in order for this to be successful? And as both of you gentlemen said, ideally, yes, you know, if life would be perfect, we would want that. But life is not perfect. And most companies that we run into start with a project or an initiative or an area or a business function that they truly really believe they can get value um, from analytics and then roll it out further and further until the point that they see value in an enterprise solution. Um, and fortunately, technology and um, market players such as yourselves um, have enabled us to move along that path a little bit more faster than we have been doing in the past. So with that, we're one minute to the hour. I want to thank both of my fellow presenters for bearing with me through this, and I want to thank One Insurer again for hosting this webinar, and I wish you all a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you very much.